Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick base and talk you through some products that I've been really liking. I was sent a bunch of these products from Style Korean, which is an online shop for Korean skincare and beauty products. I'm liking some more than others, so I thought I would just do a quick get ready with me using some of my favorite products so far. For skincare in the morning after I cleansed, I went in with two layers of this Madagascar Centella Pro Bio Sika Essence Toner from Skin. 1004 and I really like this brand because it's so like gentle and hydrating for the skin I love Centella in my skincare products because it's so soothing and calming. There's no scent It's just super super hydrating. I already applied this so I'm not gonna like apply it again I've been really liking this serum from Abib. It's their heart leaf essence calming pump and this has petunia cortata extract which is supposed to be really calming and soothing and hydrating as well that's kind of the theme of my skincare routine these days it takes a minute to absorb so i like to kind of go in and start massaging my face and getting the puffiness kind of down because I am a little bit puffy in the morning when I wake up. And then the last step of my skincare, again from Skin 1004, Hyalusika Water Fit Sun Serum. This is SPF 50 plus PA++++, which is the highest um, UVA rating you can get. So this stuff is awesome. It just sinks in really nicely. It's very soothing as well. And it wears really nicely all day. Um, underneath makeup. If you've tried the Beauty of Joseon Rice Probiotic Sunscreen, which I know so many people love. I like that one more in the winter when my skin's drier. This one I feel like has a bit of a thinner consistency, so it's better for like combination oily skin types. And I just use this as like a moisturizer sunscreen all in one. I realize that looks kind of scary, like there's a person in the corner. It's just like a coat rack and there's some hats up there. Don't be alarmed. This is a BB cream that I've been trying out. It's by Hamish. Here I have 20C Nude and 20C Light Medium. So I usually just mix these two shades. The 23C Nude is just a little bit cooler. As you can see, this one has a bit more of a golden undertone. So I just honestly mix these two shades and I find that works pretty well for me. I kind of just dab a bit on the brush and start stippling it on my face. I would say it's like medium coverage that's quite buildable, but it never looks heavy. It just kind of looks like skin. And where I need a little bit more coverage, I'll just go in with a very light, thin layer. Brows, I've been really liking this one from Espoir. It's in Classic One Brown. Um, I will link all the products down below, by the way. It has a really soft spoolie, and then the brow pencil is very thin, and it's kind of like a triangle shape. And this pencil is like a really nice consistency too. Like it's not too soft. It's not too hard or waxy. It's just kind of perfect in the middle. And the mascara I'm about to show you is probably the best mascara I've tried in recent years because it holds my curl. It doesn't flake or smudge and it's not terrible to remove at the end of the day. Even curling my lashes makes such a big difference. Before I put on mascara, I'm gonna put on a little bit of eyeshadow just for fun. I'm gonna take a little mini brush. This is the BK Beauty A504 brush. I'm gonna go in with that dusty rose color right there. Just adds a little bit of shading to the eye. This is the mascara that I was talking about. It's the Dinto One by One Lash Definer in Warm Black. It's actually like a very, very dark brown. It's not like a true black, which I find looks really natural. And this is just such a great mascara formula. I would say it's more lengthening than it is volumizing, which is perfect if you're doing like a no makeup makeup look or if you gravitate towards more natural eye looks. So today I am getting my hair cut. Then we're gonna go get some groceries and we're having lunch with Calvin's parents as well. So, yay. Today I am dedicating the next 20 minutes or however long it takes to 
go through all of my makeup and declutter it a bit. Some stuff has been in there for way too long. Some things I just don't touch because I don't like it or because it doesn't work for me. So this is the drawer where all my makeup is. So I'm just gonna open it up, show you everything that's in there and let's go through things one by one. I'm gonna go super quickly, like one sentence reviews on each product. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. Starting with this pouch, this is the Merit Signature bag that I just keep on top of my vanity with all my everyday products at the moment. This e.l.f. powder sets your makeup really nicely without looking dry and it's cheap. This is a really pretty glowy powder blush and I would pick up another shade. The Roman eyeshadows are pretty solid, especially the shimmery shades. They're such a nice pop on the eyes. I love these Merit Complexion sticks for travel or light makeup days. I don't reach for the Rare Beauty pore diffusing primer all that much, so I would not repurchase, but I'm not gonna throw it out. Love the Rare Beauty highlighters for my cheeks and my eyes, so I would repurchase, but they'll probably last me a really long time. Jane Iredell Pressed Powder Foundation. Love this to set concealer. It gives me a bit of coverage, and I have already repurchased a backup. This under eye brightener is pretty good, but honestly not that special enough to repurchase. Raw Mand Better Than Cheek Blush in Blueberry Chip. This is a really nice cool tone pink, but a little chalky so would not repurchase. The Rare Beauty Concealer set down really nicely and I already have two shades. Really great mascara if you like long natural looking lashes. Some brow products, the Merit Brow Pomade, 10 out of 10. Espoir Brow Pencil, also 10 out of 10 and I have a backup. The Benefit Brow Setter didn't work that well on my type of brows, but I think it would be better if you have thinner brow hairs. The La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Lips is pretty moisturizing, but nothing special. And just my two must-have tools. I don't reach for this NARS foundation all the time because it's not as smoothing as other foundations, so I wouldn't repurchase. I got this Maybelline foundation for my wedding day over two years ago. It was really good for the day, it held up well, but it's a bit too heavy for me for everyday use, so I wouldn't repurchase. The Kosas foundation, I really like this on first impression, but the more I wore it, the more it actually broke me out, and I didn't love that, so I don't use it anymore, and I'm gonna get rid of it. The concealer actually breaks me out as well, so I think the Kosas products for my face are just not for me. I got this Charlotte Tilbury foundation in PR. I haven't tried it very much yet, so I don't have a rating, but I'm obviously gonna keep it around and keep trying it out. This Purito BB cream is really nice medium coverage and sets down pretty well, so I will keep it around and keep using it. I always get compliments on my skin when I wear this Hamish BB cream, and that's a big win for me. This IT Cosmetic CC Plus Nude Glow is nice. I think it'd be really good for normal to dry skin. It's a little bit too glowy for me. This Dr. Jart BB cream is more versatile in my opinion. It doesn't emphasize dry spots or make you shiny throughout the day. I've almost emptied this Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. Love this, have repurchased it several times and will continue to. This Claire's BB cream on the other hand is a little thick and pasty. It doesn't melt into the skin the way I like, so I will get rid of this and I wouldn't repurchase it. I like the Rose Ink Foundation, but I don't need two, so I'm gonna give the lighter shade to my mom and keep the other one. I like using this when I'm just going out for dinner or something quick because it's not the most long lasting. Another Merit Foundation Stick, definitely a keeper. I'm gonna keep the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. It's pretty good, but not amazing, and I don't reach for it all that much. This Laneige Cushion has nice coverage, nice matte finish. However, it makes my skin look a little bit dry and cakey, and it's kind of old now, so I'm going to get rid of it. Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I wonder if it was a little bit overhyped, at least for me. I don't reach for it all the time because it can look a bit too shiny, but I will keep it. Probably not would purchase it though. I'm decluttering these e.l.f. ones that I've opened, not because they're not good, but they only have a shelf life of six months and I've had them for over a year. I have one that is not opened yet, so I'm gonna give that to a friend. Now moving on to concealers, I have another Rare Beauty one, which I'm going to keep and use up. This RMS Uncover Up, it's a little bit too emollient for my liking, but I'll keep it and try to use it up. The NARS concealer is my favorite concealer of all time. It's in the shade vanilla and I will be purchasing a backup. This MAC Prep and Prime highlighter pen was mysteriously in one of my Sephora orders when I didn't order it. It's uh, not my shade, it's a bit dark, so I'm going to declutter it because I never use it. 
Now onto powders, Burt's Bees Mineral Powder Foundation. It's pretty good. I got it thinking it might be a dupe for the Jane Iredell, but I do like the Jane Iredell better. So I'll use it up, but I wouldn't repurchase. Some people say this Maybelline Fit Me powder is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pest powder. I'd say they're pretty similar to be honest. It sets really nicely, doesn't look powdery, and it's a very fine powder. And I can confirm the Charlotte Tilbury powder is really good. It is very mattifying, very blurring. It is very expensive though, but it does last a long time. This Hourglass Lighting Edit Palette might be my favorite thing in my entire collection. It's so pretty and so versatile and it's expensive, but I would buy it again. Are you ready to go through the blushes? It's a lot of blush, but bear with me. These Undone Beauty cream blushes are a great drugstore option for cream blush. However, I don't reach for them as much because I have blushes that I like better now and they're old and a bit grimy, so I'm going to declutter them. Here's where things get a little bit strange. I have two Tower 28 cream blushes. This one in Golden Hour is a really nice warm tone blush. It blends well and it's not sticky, so I'll keep it around and try to use it up a bit more. But this shade in Office Hours, I got it in PR and a couple months after I opened it, I started to notice these little spots on the blush. I don't know if you can see it, but they're like raised little dots that are all over the place. And I always wash my hands really well before I touch any of my products, so I'm not really sure what's going on, but ever since I noticed that, I basically just stopped using it, so I'm going to get rid of this. Next, I have these putty blushes from a Korean brand called Fui. I actually did a video with them a little while ago. The colors are so fun, the texture is great, and they last kind of decently a long time, so I'm definitely gonna keep these around. Powder blush from Laura Mercier in the shade Fresco. This is a really nice nude beige blush, definitely keeping it around and I would repurchase more shades. Two more ramen blushes that honestly, I don't reach for that often because like I said, it is a bit powdery, but I definitely want to play around with them a bit more. These Milani baked blushes are the best drugstore blushes I've tried to date. I like both of these shades, but Luminoso is definitely my favorite. This is a random powder blush that I got in one of those Ipsy boxes. I did like two months and then I canceled. It's a nice color, but I don't really reach for it, so I think I'll give it to a friend. These e.l.f. putty blushes are pretty good. I really like these orangey shades for the spring and summer. I don't need both, so I'm gonna give one to my mom and keep the other. Two stick blushes. This one is Nude Sticks in the shade Sunkissed. It's a very popular shade and I found it wasn't bad, but I don't like the waxiness of the formula, so I'm going to get rid of it. And then this is by Radiate by Amanda. It's a brand I've never heard of before. The color is really nice, but it's so crayony and waxy that I never use it. And when I want that strawberry kind of blush, I can just use my Rare Beauty in Grateful. The Say blushes are a great option if you have drier skin and don't like it super pigmented. Rare Beauty is more pigmented and a bit thinner, which I prefer. The Glossier Cloud Paints have a similar texture to the Say blush, but maybe a bit more gel-like. I've had mine for over two years and it only lasts six months, so I'm going to declutter. Okay, now we're going to the Rare Beauty blushes and the Merit blushes. You already know how much I like these blushes, especially the dewy versions. Um, I did a whole video listing all the shades and showing them on my cheeks, so definitely check that out. I'm keeping all these shades, including these cute minis. Next, we have the Merit blushes. That's Beverly Hills. This is Mood. Raspberry Beret, I love this color. Terracotta, very nice and cheeky. They repackaged the blushes to this gold packaging. So this is the old Raspberry Beret and I have a new one. So I'm just gonna get rid of the old one since I've had it for over two years. These blushes are really natural looking but not the most long lasting. So I like it for super chill, relaxed, no makeup makeup days. This Rare Beauty Melting Cream Blush, I do not like. I found it to be drying, hard to blend, and not long lasting, so I'm gonna say goodbye to this one. Now moving on to highlighters. The Say Gel Highlighter is really lightweight, blends in nicely to the skin. I like patting in a little bit when I just want a little sparkle, a little shimmer. I got a mini and it's still going strong because I don't reach for it that often, but I wanna try to use it up. The Rare Beauty Highlighter in Mesmerize. It's a super pretty shade, but I don't reach for it because it kind of makes my makeup look patchy if I put it on top. Powder Highlight in the same shade. I really like this as a blush topper or even on my eyelids, so definitely keeping this. 
Another wedding makeup purchase, this is the Wet n Wild highlighter in a bit of a cool tone, pinky shade. It's really nice, honestly, pretty similar to the finish of the Rare Beauty. Side by side, Mesmerize is more bronzy rose gold and the Wet n Wild is more pink. Highlighter by Radiate by Amanda. It's a really nice formula, very smooth, pretty pigmented. It's a bit too warm for my skin tone, so I'm gonna give it to a friend. This is probably the most unique highlighter that I have. It's by that brand Fui, it's called Diamond Carrot. The sparkles are a little bit more noticeable and sparse with this one. It's a really nice eyeshadow topper and I think I should wear it more, especially like when I go out or around the holidays. The Merit highlighters are thin, emollient, they're moisturizing and give a beautiful sheen. I have a swatch video with all three shades if you're interested, I will link it below. The shade I reach for the most is Kava, but I will keep the other two around. Two more Nude Sticks products. This is the bronzer in Bondi Bay, which I don't use that often, and their Hey Honey highlighter, which is just not flattering on my skin tone. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of these formulas, so I'm going to get rid of them. I have this bronze multi-stick from Kiss and Smink. I found this formula to be a bit dry and just really metallic, so I don't love it. I'm gonna declutter it. And then I have this water highlighter from Undone Beauty. It's a really nice shade, very natural looking, but I don't reach for it and it's getting kind of dried out. I've had it for a while, so I'm going to declutter it. The bronzer sticks from Rare Beauty are really easy to blend and have a powdery finish. I don't typically wear bronzer unless I'm doing a very full look, so I haven't finished it, but I'm going to try to finish it. The bronzer bombs from Merit are really beginner friendly. They're very sheer and hard to mess up. I would like to try some of the other shades. This shade in Quince is really light. It's almost like a beige kind of base for blush, just adding a hint of warmth. A mini of the NARS Laguna bronzer. I don't reach for this very often, to be honest. I think I got it as a Sephora birthday gift, but I'll keep it around in case I want to bring a bronzer on travels. Fenty bronzer is nice and matte. It's not too pigmented. I really like taking this with a fluffy brush and just dusting it on the perimeters of my face to add a little bit of warmth. Next, I have a collection of products I received from Annabelle. First is this powder bronzer. It's called the Perfect Bronzer. A bigger bronzer that looks a little bit shimmery. And then there is this gorgeous blush. I love the shade. And then I lengthen a mascara and a brow pencil. I don't know if Annabelle is just in Canada. If you have seen it anywhere else, do let me know. Okay, almost there, moving on to eye products. The Tarte Full Bloom Palette has so many fun colors, such great variety, and that's why I got it. I have a lot of fun playing around with these colors, so I'm definitely keeping it around, but I wouldn't say they're my favorite eyeshadow formula I've tried. Some of them are a little bit chalky. This Natasha Denona Nude Palette is much creamier and much more pigmented in my opinion. I really like that middle color in particular. Definitely keeping this around. This is another random eyeshadow that was in one of the Ipsy boxes. I don't really reach for this that often and I think I have a similar shade in the Natasha Denona palette. So I'm gonna give this to a friend. I wore this palette from Quo on my wedding day. It wore really nicely. They're definitely not the best eyeshadow formula ever, um, but they did the trick for the day and I'm only keeping it for sentimental reasons. Okay, this is another MAC product that was mysteriously in one of my Sephora orders. It's a black uh, liquid liner. I don't wear eyeliner really ever, so I'm going to give this away to a friend. The only time I've worn eyeliner in recent years was on my wedding day, and this was the Revlon Colorstay Liner in brown. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't use it anymore and it's kind of old, but if I had to buy another liner in the future, I would consider buying this one. Two Cure White's eyeshadows. This one is in kind of a taupey, shimmery shade. I think it's a nice sheer wash of color if you like this kind of shade. So I'll keep it around because it's so compact. This one, I really like the packaging. It's another Cure White's eyeshadow. I never use this shade. It's a bit dramatic for me, but I'll keep it around just in case. I was really excited to pick up one of the Laura Mercier eyeshadow sticks. This shade, however, pulls really red on my eyes and it kind of makes me look like I have like an eye infection, but I'm determined to find a way to make it work because I do like the formula and it was kind of expensive. I got this mini version of the same product in the shade Strapless as part of the Sephora birthday gift. 
it's a much more neutral shade. Between the two, maybe I can like mix them and make it work. These bling bling eye sticks from Etude House were kind of a miss for me. I was really excited. I thought it'd be a nice kind of shimmery topper, but I found them to be a bit too chunky for me and they irritated my eyes. So I'm gonna declutter these. The Ilia liquid eyeshadows are really nice. They dry down and they do not budge. The shade in Aura was like a nice shimmery pink, but it only has a shelf life of six months and it kind of irritated my eyes near the end. This Etude House Mascara Fixer holds a curl really well. They have a clear version, this is the black version. I've had this for a while and it's drying out so I'm going to toss it. The Kier Weiss Mascara I think is a decent option if you don't need a waterproof mascara, but because I have kind of oily lids, it didn't really work for me so I'm going to declutter it. Also decluttering this Kosas mascara, it is a very dry formula. It felt a bit heavy on my lashes and did smudge a little bit. I got this Smashbox eyeshadow primer when I first started kind of experimenting with eyeshadows. It turned very dry and pasty in the tube after a little while. So I'm gonna get rid of it and just use a bit of concealer and setting powder as an eyeshadow base. I enjoyed this Milk Brow Gel. I think I got a bit of a dark shade, um, so I would repurchase it in a different shade. I thought the spoolie was really nice and easy to work with. It's quite pigmented. But mine is starting to smell a little off, so I'm going to get rid of it. Also getting rid of this Cure Weiss Brow Gel. I thought the formula was a little bit too liquidy and runny and didn't really hold as well as some of my other ones. The Anastasia Brow Gel, this is a mini. I like that it's a drier formula and it leaves behind a pretty even tint. It's pretty pigmented, but never clumpy. The clear brow gel, objectively, it's a good brow gel. I think I just don't really gravitate towards clear gels. I find it doesn't really do that much for me, but I do actually like this one for flyaways for my hair. I really like this brow definer, also by Anastasia. It's easy to apply and wide, so it covers a big area so you can do your brows really quickly. Really beginner friendly. I think this is the last brow product. This is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. This gives you really natural strokes and it's really hard to overdo it, so also great for beginners. Now these are two samples that I got from like some gift bag here and there, the Tom Ford uh, Traceless Matte Primer and the Benefit Professional. I don't really use primers every day, but I keep these around just in case I'm traveling and I feel like bringing a primer. Last category are all my lip products. These are the Amuse Dew Tints. I have six shades. They're all really, really nice. This might be one of my favorite lip tint formulas. Decently pigmented, lasts a long time, moisturizing and glossy. The Rode Peptide Lip Treatments are another product where I wonder if it was overhyped. I will say the watermelon one is my favorite. It smells really nice, but at the end of the day, it is a clear gloss that's a little bit sticky for my liking. So I'll keep two of them, which I've already used on my lips, and the unscented one I'm gonna give to my sister. These lip tints from Fui are actually like a velvet matte kind of product. They're really nice, comes in nice shades, but I never love them because I don't love a matte lip from day to day. So if you like a matte lip, you might like these, but since they're a bit old now, I'm going to declutter them. Tower 28 lip glosses, these I do like. Um, the orange one, Fire, I bought last year, and then I got the mauve one in PR, and then I bought Wild. I'm going to declutter Fire because it's getting a little bit gloopy and I've had it for a while, and the other two I will keep. More Korean lip tints, I have three from Rom Ant, and then two from Peri Para. From glossiest to least glossiest, I would say Rom and Glasting Water Tint, and then the Dewy Full, and then the Juicy Lasting Tint, and then Peri Para. The Juicy Lasting Tint is the most pigmented, and then the rest are all kind of similar. Maybelline Lifter Glosses are really good. I would repurchase more shades. I've had these for about three years now, and they're kind of gloopy, so I'm gonna get rid of them, but I do like them. I could group these Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oils with my Korean Lip Tints. I have a full video on these lip oils as well. This is a random bright orange lip tint from the body shop. It's very full coverage. It's not a color I ever wear. I've never worn it out, but I keep it around just because it's a fun color. The Merit lipsticks are one of my favorite lipstick formulas. You can wear it really sheer, you can build it up. They have a lot of great shades. I have Fashion, Slip, and Cabo. I should really wear these more. They're really nice. Cure Weiss lip gloss, nothing special really. This is a cute kind of bubblegum pink that I'll keep around just because it's new-ish. 
These undone glosses are super juicy and not sticky. I'm gonna declutter them because they're getting kind of old, but I do wish I used them more. This Glossier lip gloss with all the sparkles is super fun on top of any lip color. It just makes it so much more spectacular. It's a little bit goopy and sticky for my liking and it's old, so I'm gonna declutter it. This lip gloss that I got in, yes, you guessed it, the Ipsy bag is looking like a dupe for that gloss. So I haven't opened it, but I will keep it around. This is a mini of the Fui lip tint that I'm going to get rid of as well. My one MAC lipstick, this is in the shade Kinda Sexy. It's a nice kind of neutral pinky tone. I like these kinds of shades and it doesn't smell bad yet, so I'm just gonna keep it. My favorite everyday lip pencil, Rare Beauty and Fun. It's matte, it stays on great. I love the shade I have repurchased. I have these two mini Fenty lip glosses that came in a set from Sephora. I enjoy these. I like the original one more than the heat one. The Charlotte Tilbury Tinted Balm in Pillow Talk honestly kind of wears more like a lipstick. I really like it. And then Clinique Black Honey, I wasn't super impressed with it at first, but I have to say it's growing on me a little bit. It's just really nice and easy and sheer. Same with this NARS Tinted Balm in Laguna. It's just really easy to throw on and gives you a nice wash of color, exactly the kind of lip products I like. I love this Vanilla Beige Summer Fridays lip balm. The only thing I don't like about it is the applicator. I find it's a little bit messy. This Say Lipstick in Modern is a really nice rosy brown color. Very matte if you like matte lips. The Freck Makeup Club is a little bit more waxy and sheer and it kind of smells like crayons, which I don't love. I'm gonna declutter these lip pencils from Kiss and Smink. Um, they are very bright and pigmented, but I don't reach for them and they're getting kind of old. I love these Etude House Syrup Glossy Balms. Perfect wash of color, super cute and glossy. Two lip liners that I'm going to declutter because they're old. One is from Essence. This is the waterproof one that I wore on my wedding day. It was great. And then this one from Annabelle is really old. It's like a red color when I used to wear red lips kind often going out. This is not makeup, it's like an ear wax cleaning stick thing. A little Rare Beauty primer set that I'm never gonna use, so I'm just gonna toss it. And then this cute Tom Ford lipstick in a nice kind of brownie pink color. I just have lipsticks that are the similar color, so I'm gonna keep it and maybe give it to a friend. And then we have six Toboco lip balms. Three of them are a dewy formula, three of them are a powdery kind of matte formula. Colors are really nice and bright and cute. I will keep these. The Merit lip oils are so great. They feel like a lip balm. I have Cava, Sangria, which is perfect for fall, and then Taupe. I'm going to get rid of Au Naturel because I've had it the longest and it's getting a little bit separated. Rare Beauty Lipstick in Fun. I really love this shade. I should wear it more because Calvin compliments me every time I wear it. So love it. This Milani lipstick in Naturally Chic I wore on my wedding day and then I didn't really wear it again, but I totally should. It's a comfortable lipstick formula, really nice. This Kier Weiss lipstick in Ingenious is a nice cool tone brown shade. Haven't really worn it yet, but I'm going to experiment with it. Dior Lip Glow in Cherry, I love this stuff. This is my second tube. The first shade I had was the berry color. Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss, not bad, just okay. And then this RMS tinted lip balm. I don't love this, it's a bit drying for a lip balm, but uh, I will keep it and try to see if I can make it work. This is everything I'm keeping. This is the little pile that I'm gonna give away to family or friends. And here's what I'm getting rid of because they're either old or expired.